Hello and welcome back. In this video, I will give you an introduction to the medical parasitology. We are going to cover the following facts about the parasitic infections. Types of parasites, types of hosts, types of life cycles, sources of infection, modes of infection, pathogenic mechanisms and immune response to the parasites. Medical parasitology deals with the parasites which cause human infections and produce disease in them. It is broadly divided into two parts, protozoology and helminthology. Protozoa are unicellular organisms and helminths are multicellular organisms. The parasites, both protozoa and helminths depend on a living host for their nourishment and survival. Parasites can be classified as ectoparasites, endoparasites and free living parasites. Ectoparasites live only on the body surface of the host without penetrating the tissue. Examples include lice, ticks and mites. The term infestation is often employed for parasitization with ectoparasites. Endoparasite is a parasite which lives inside the body of the host. Most of the protozoan and helminthic parasites causing human diseases are endoparasites. Examples are hookworm, pinworms, tapeworms, giardia, etc. Endoparasitism is also called infection. Free living parasites are the ones which can live independent of the host. For example, acanthamoeba, balamuthia, and negalaria. There is no major reservoir host as these amoebae species are free living in the environment and are only opportunistically parasitic. The endoparasites can be further classified as obligate, facultative, accidental and aberrant. Obligate parasite is the one that cannot exist without a host, for example Toxoplasma gondii and Plasmodium species. Facultative parasites may either live as parasitic form or as a free living form, for example Negalaria folleri, Acanthamoeba and Balamuthia. Accidental parasites in humans are those for whom humans are an unusual host. For example, Echinococcus granulosus infects the humans accidentally, thus giving rise to hydrated cysts in them. Aberrant parasites are the ones which infect a host in whom they cannot develop further and are called aberrant or wandering parasites. For example, Toxocara canis, dog round worm, infecting the humans. Now, what is a host? Host is defined as an organism which harbors the parasite and provides nourishment and shelter to them and is relatively larger than the parasite. The host may be of the following types. Definitive host. The host in which the adult parasite lives and undergoes sexual reproduction is called the definitive host. For example, mosquito acts as a definitive host in malaria. The gametocytes ingested by the mosquito during the blood meal undergoes sexual reproduction inside the gut of mosquito and forms a ukinete followed by an oocyst and finally releasing the sporozoids that are infective for humans. Intermediate host The host in which the larval stage of the parasite lives or asexual multiplication takes place is called the intermediate host. Humans are the intermediate host for malaria parasite in which the sporozoids injected by the mosquito develops into mature parasitic forms called merozoids. These merozoids keep multiplying inside the human cells asexually. Reservoir host In an endemic area, a parasitic infection is continuously kept up by the presence of a host which harbors the parasite and acts as an important reservoir of infection for other susceptible hosts. For example, dog is the reservoir host of hydrated cyst. Humans are accidentally infected by the eggs released in the feces of dogs. It is a dead end infection in humans for hydrated cyst. However, when the eggs are ingested by the sheep, goat or swine, the eggs develop into the hydrated cyst in them and when these animals die or get eaten by dogs, and other carnivores, thus transmitting the infection to the susceptible dogs and other carnivores. The parasite undergoes sexual reproduction in the dogs, making them the definitive host and the sheep as intermediate host. 
accidental host we've already discussed that man is an accidental host for cystic echinococcus or hydrated cyst an accidental host is the one in which the infection is not normally found peritonic host Peritonic host is the one in which the larval stage of the parasite remains viable without further development. Such host transmit the infection to another host. For example, fish is a peritonic host for the larva of Diphyllobotrium latum. Now coming to the host parasite relationships. Host parasite relationships are of the following types: symbiosis, commensalism and parasitism. Symbiosis in which both an host and the parasite are dependent upon each other none of them suffers any harm from the association commensalism only the parasite derives benefit from the association without causing any injury to the host the commensal is capable of living an independent life also the parasite derives benefits and the host is always harmed due to the association of parasitism The parasite cannot have an independent life. Now coming to the different life cycles of the parasites. Indirect life cycle. When a parasite requires two or more species of the host to complete its development, the life cycle is called as indirect life cycle. For example, malarial parasite requires both human host and mosquito to complete its life cycle. One human cannot directly transmit malarial parasite to the other human without the mediation of mosquitoes. Direct life cycle. When a parasite is transmitted directly from one host to the next without an intermediate host or vector of any other species. For example, nematodes, cryptosporidium, entamoeba histolytica and giardia species. that can get transmitted from one human to the other directly now coming to various sources of infection first is contaminated soil and water walking barefoot in soil can expose a person to the infected larva of the hookworm that can penetrate directly through the skin soil can be polluted with embryonated eggs of roundworm or whipworm and may be accidentally ingested Infective forms of parasites present in water may be ingested like cyst of amoeba and giardia. Water containing the intermediate host may be swallowed for example cyclops containing guinea worm larvae. Infected larvae in water may enter by penetrating the exposed skin for example cercaria of schistosomes. Another source of infection could be ingestion of or vegetables that contain the infective stages of the parasites for example amoebic cysts toxoplasma oocysts and even eggs of echinococcus granulosus also ingestion of raw or undercooked meat that can be harboring the infective larvae for example measly pork containing cysticercus cellulosae the larval stages of tinea solium what is a vector A disease vector is any living agent that carries and transmits an infectious pathogen to another living organism. In order to be called a vector, the living organism has to acquire the disease pathogen from the reservoir that can be an animal or bird or an infected human and then carry the pathogen in its own body to transmit it to another susceptible host that can be a human or an animal. What are biological vectors? The term biological vector refers to a vector which not only assists in the transfer of parasites but the parasites undergo development or multiplication in their body as well. They are also called as true vectors. Examples of true vectors are mosquito that transmits malaria and filariasis, sand flies that transmits kalazar, setsi flies that transmits sleeping sickness. Ridovid bug that transmits Chagas disease and ticks that transmits Babesiosis. In addition to the biological transmission where the infectious organism enters and undergoes development or propagation inside the vector, the infectious organisms can be transmitted by the vectors by mechanical means. In mechanical transmission, the organism resides on the outer body parts of the vector. 
Examples include the house flies that can mechanically transmit several infections that are given in this list. Now carrier as a source of infection. Carrier is a person or animal who is infected with parasite without any clinical or subclinical disease manifestation. He can transmit the parasite to others. Common carriers for parasitic infection include dogs, cats, birds, reptiles and even humans. Various types of carriers can be healthy carrier who never had a disease manifestation, convalescent carriers who are recovering from a disease and then become carrier for the others. Temporary carriers are those that remain carriers for less than six months after infection. Chronic carriers are the carriers which carry the infection for more than six months. Paradoxical carriers are those who acquire infection from a carrier and themselves become carriers. And lastly, auto infection as the source of infection. For example, auto infection with pinworm is common in children. Pinworms migrate to the anal canal at night and cause intense itching. The child scratches the anal area and the eggs and larva get lodged in the fingernails during this process. If the child does not follow proper hygiene, the larvae and the eggs can get ingested while eating, thus establishing auto infection in them. Another example is internal reinfection, where larva produced by the adult worms, for example in strongyloides, can penetrate the intestinal wall and re-enter the bloodstream, then migrating to the lungs and are cuffed up and swallowed again, leading them to cause the reinfection in the host. Now after discussing various sources of infection, we come to the various modes of infection or routes of infection. Oral route is the most common method of transmission by contaminated food, water, soiled fingers or formites. Many intestinal parasites enter the body in this manner. The infective stages being cysts, embryonated eggs or larval forms. Infection with Entamoeba histolytica and other intestinal protozoa occur when the infective cysts are swallowed. Skin penetration Entry through skin is another important mode of transmission. Hookworm infection is required when the larvae enter the skin of the person walking barefooted on contaminated soil. Schistosomiasis is acquired when the circarial larvae in water penetrate the skin. Vector transmission. Many parasitic diseases are transmitted by insect bite. For example, malaria is transmitted by the bite of female Anopheles mosquito. Filariasis is transmitted by the bite of Culex mosquito and Leishmania is transmitted by sand fly. Direct transmission. Parasitic infection may be transmitted by person to person contact in some cases. For example, by kissing in the case of gingival amoebae and by sexual intercourse in trichomoniasis. Next is vertical transmission. Mother to fetus transmission may take place in malaria and toxoplasmosis. Hydrogenic transmission. It is seen in case of transfusion malaria and toxoplasmosis after organ transplantation. Now coming to pathogenesis of parasites. Parasitic infections may remain inapparent or give rise to clinical disease. A few organisms such as Entamoeba histolytica may live as surface commensals without invading the tissue. Clinical infection produced by the parasite may take many forms that is acute, subacute, chronic, latent or recurrent. Various pathogenic mechanisms which can occur in parasitic infections are lytic necrosis. Enzymes produced by some parasites can cause lytic necrosis for example, Entamoeba histolytica lyses the intestinal cells and produces amoebic ulcers. Trauma Attachment of hookworms on the jejunal mucosa leads to trauma, damage of villi and bleeding at the site of attachment. Another mechanism can be allergic manifestation. That is, the clinical illness may be caused by host immune response to parasitic infection. For example, skin and eye involvement in parasitic infections, eosinophilic pneumonia in Ascaris infection 
and anaphylactic shock in case of rupture of hydated cyst parasites can also cause physical obstruction in various body parts for example masses of round worm can cause intestinal obstruction another example is plasmodium falciparum malaria producing blockage of brain capillaries in cerebral malaria another mechanism is inflammatory reaction clinical illness may be caused by the inflammatory changes and consequent fibrosis for example lymphadenitis in filariasis and urinary bladder granuloma in schistosoma hematobium infection some parasitic infections have been shown to cause neoplasia or cancers for example liver fluke clonorchis may produce bile duct carcinoma and schistosoma hematobium may cause urinary bladder cancer another manifestation is space occupying lesions Some parasites produce cystic lesions that may compress the surrounding tissue or organ. For example, hydrated cyst in liver and cysticercae in brain. And lastly, immunity in parasitic infections. Like other infectious agents, parasites also elicit immune responses in the host, both humoral as well as cellular. but immunological protection against parasitic infections is much less efficient than it is in bacteria or viral infections compared to bacteria and viruses parasites are very large and have more complex structures and antigenicity many protozoan parasites are intracellular in location and this protects them from immunological attack excessive ige responses occur in helminthiasis producing allergic manifestations including anaphylaxis A characteristic cellular response in helminth parasite is eosinophilia both local and systemic. Parasites like trypanosomes exhibit antigenic variation within the host. This genetic switch protects them from antibodies. Some infections may produce immunodeficiency due to extensive damage to the reticular endothelial system as in case of visceral leishmaniasis. The fact that immunity normally plays an important role in containment of parasitic infections is highlighted by the clinical disease produced by opportunistic parasites such as Isospora, Cryptosporidium and Toxoplasma gondii only in acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and other immunodeficiencies. So that was all about the introduction to the medical parasitology. In the next videos we will cover the protozoa and helminths in more details. Hope you like the video. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.